Good afternoon, lovely tubers. White Mexican back in for another video today. I'm going to be reviewing a plethora of selections today, mostly going to focus on kind of the hand trap archetype. But let's go ahead and get started here really quickly. Let's just admire the beautiful aesthetic of the Prismatic Secret Rares from the 2019 Gold Sarko Tins. These are all just amazing. Um, I really like Danger Mothman. This is a really cool card. This is basically a Dark World Dealings on legs. I've been doing a lot of experimentation with this card. I've been playing a lot of different decks where you like to pitch to the grave, pop off effects, super cool stuff. Unfortunately, it's an insect. It would have been a lot cooler if it was a fiend, but I mean, it's Mothman, so I guess it makes sense that's an insect. But this is the highest rarity as a Prismatic Secret Rare reprint. First editions are about three ish to four bones. And there's about five push pages of this card, so it's a super great card. I like it a lot. I personally don't have any copies of this. I need to pick some up because I think over time, if they don't, I, I'm pretty sure they will. Hopefully with the 2020 tins, they'll bring back the Prismatic Secrets, but we'll see what happens with that. Definitely would be a smart move by Konami to bring back these Prismatics. We have Jackalope over here, which is pretty cool. Called by the Grave, which I'm going to get into uh, here shortly. Um, some Sky Striker stuff. The big things for me specifically is obviously Danger because the Danger engine is really splashable. You can put it in, mix in with a lot of different decks. Uh, Sky Striker, no one really plays this deck anymore. There's a very small amount of players that play this, um, but still a big, you know, fan favorite deck. It was powerful for a long, long, long time and still kind of trip some people up with the shenanigans of the Mystic Mind builds, but even more so the Danger stuff, but also the Thunder Dragon stuff. The upgraded rarities for the Thunder Dragon stuff is really, really great. You have uh, Dragon Dark here, uh, Drag it, Dragon Hawk over here. It's pretty awesome. Dragon Roar, some more um, Sky Striker stuff. And these are all relatively cheap. Um, this is really big, too. Um, Red Reboot and Altergeist Multifaker, these are huge cards that are super cheap right now, and they're really nice Prismatic Secret Rares. I would definitely pick up copies of these. I think it's a mistake not to pick these up, these high rarities, first editions. Heat Leo, it's pretty cool too. And then, of course, even this, the Soul Flyer Dragon, this is really awesome too. It's pretty insane how this is the cheapest Prismatic Secret Rare, apparently, according to this setting. But enough about that. Moving into the actual hand traps here. Part of the video, Called by the Grave. So this has always been a fantastic card. This is the card to stop hand traps. And really great artwork. You know, it's got like the drag by the drag down to the grave artwork. Pretty cool. Of course, we have the Prismax Secret Hairs looking really nice. The Ultra Rares from Dual Devastator, OG Commons, and then you know the seat the special edition super rares. So obviously some pretty cool selections. Wouldn't be surprised. Obviously, people are going to be going for the Prismax Secret Rares. They are quite pricey right now, but I mean, it makes sense. This is a quick play, pretty diverse card, and it's got a double effect. It removes and negates effects, so that's that's pretty devastating. Uh, first first editions here, right off the top, are going to be almost about 10 bones all across the board. And there's plenty in the market. There's a 20 of right here, and there's four pages. This is just fantastic. It's just a beautiful card, and really just popular card in general. Really quick, I want to take a look at... I, I think the Ultras are disgusting. I, I really don't like Ultra Rares at all, really. It's, it's very rare that I, I pick up Ultra Rare cards. Pretty much only pick up Ultra Rare cards if like all the other prints are just like common or something. But I would say my second choice would be the Super Rares from the Special Edition. Um, obviously, with some Special Editions, they're not First Edition or Limited Edition because they're like their Special Edition promos, but I mean, whatever it is, what it is, you're still holding pretty good value. They're like about $6. But when you can get a Prismatic Secret Rare for literally, like this is just another one of those examples, you pay a couple dollars more and you can get a ridiculously high rarity upgrade as a Prismatic Secret Rare, even more so. I would definitely spend the 5 ish $3 more to get the Prismatic Secret Rare because they just look fantastic. Moving on here, Dark Ruler No More. So I'm going to admit, I kind of fell asleep on this card. I didn't even really know what this card did. I didn't even really know about this card until pretty recently. I was playing online, and someone whipped this out on me and just blocked my whole board for a turn and pretty much just took me out. It's pretty legendary. You got, like, the Dark Ruler, 
hotties hades right here getting blasted looking like some dragon ball z action right here but this card's great uh obviously it's a solo print it's one of the new promo cards or not really new anymore but the gold sarco tins promo cards prismatic secret rare beautiful this card's like 13 bones uh 13 14 bones right off the bat i think people kind of know that this card has been slowly gradually increasing it's pretty impressive there's only two pages on the market of this there's a 49 wall right here which is pretty impressive but this is still such a relatively new card 2019 gold sarco tins i know it's almost been a year we're getting the 2020 tins here shortly but this is still a new card to me and it's just really surprising that how many people have been picking this up but it doesn't make sense because it's such a blowout card you play this at the right time and it can be extremely devastating and it's just a really really good card and i don't know how the hell i just missed this card but uh, unfortunately, I definitely missed the train because it's gone up significantly in value. And uh, I only invested in two gold Sarco tins personally. I was actually at Walmart like, last month and I found two of them. So um, I never actually bought cases, which I kind of regret because you can see like all across the board here, there's pretty good value in these are obviously just the Prismatic Secret Rares. But just as time has gone on, there's hold some pretty good value in the gold Sarco tins. Next card is going to be Dimension Shifter. I don't like this card. I really don't. If it, if you, obviously it would probably be too good if it didn't have the effect where you didn't have to have any cards in your graveyard. But the sheer fact that you literally have to have no cards in your graveyard. This is literally, you can only play this at one part of the game, which is going to be you essentially either going first and passing, playing nothing. Maybe you have like, you know, uh evenly mashed in your hand or some other crazy hand trap but there's literally like this is so situational this card is so hard to play and literally if you play one card it's dead you can't even use it so i really don't and you can see why like the, the price point is reflecting this card is just like super cheap plenty on the market and i just i just did not believe in this card i just wanted to show up it because it's just again one of the promos from the 2019 gold sarpentons which is a big feature in this video and uh it is a hand trap so i just kind of i wanted to put as many hand traps as i could think of in this these aren't hand traps, obviously, but I'm just kind of going into some side options for magic and trap removal that are pretty, pretty great. Twin Twisters, obviously. Fun fact, I always, so, almost always, side a playset of Twin Twisters as well as a playset of Royal Decree. I think those are such key side cards. I think every deck should side a, a playset of Twin Twisters and Royal Decree because they are just like the perfect ideal side cards depending on what you're playing. But that's just my personal intake on that. Of course, we have ultra rares, super awesome, um, really expensive, not really concerned so much with that. My personal favorites are the Shadows and Valhalla Secret Rares, first editions exclusively. I would much rather, you know, pay a few dollars and get a first edition Secret Rare that just looks beautiful than, you know, pay 50 plus dollars for the Ultimate Rare. The Ultimate Rares do look nice, they're harder to get and all that, but just on a cost basis being effective, I would definitely go for these Secret Rares. Um, four, so five dollars. Five dollars, you can get yourself a nice, beautiful, secret rare first edition twin twister. There is four pages left of this. I think this is going to be the healthy alternative. This is definitely um, nothing to be played around with. This is still a very, very nice card, even compared to the ultimate rare. In my personal opinion, it might be just a little biased because secret rare is. I just, I love secret rare. It's one of my favorite rarities. Of course, the originals are pretty sweet too. We have the 2016 mega tins, which are pretty nice. But I wanted to take a look at the Breakers of Shadow original OG prints, first edition. These are very nice too. So I really do love the secret rares, but I'm not going to lie. I am a big fan, as long as the price is right, I am a big fan of the original uh, original prints. So Breakers of Shadow right here, um, we're getting first editions, and they're like two bones. They're like two bones across the board for the first editions. There is five plus pages this is also a really really great alternative if you guys aren't going to drop the cash for the ultimates which i really do not recommend you guys do i think they're super overpriced and yeah they've got collector value everyone goes nuts over ultimate rares these days but this is the time when you go in when everyone's focusing on the ultimate rares and you buy the original print first editions for two bones and the secret rares this is that's what i personally recommend Moving on here, Mystical Space Typhoon, the original OG removal of Trap and Magic cards. Such a great card. You know, this is like the Generation 1 of Twin Twisters. This is a simple one-for-one, one, and the tactics behind this card is just so great. Again, a lot of great rarities. We have really expensive Ultimate Rare, 
um, pretty expensive now. He what didn't always used to be, but you know, it's still. I've always believed in the Ghost Golds. I really, really love those cards. They are still very much Ghost rares, and their price points are starting to reflect for all of them. Um, I think there's four of them, if I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. I want to talk about the OG original print ultra rares, though. Now, granted, I always kind of complain about ultra rares. Definitely not my favorite rarity, but when it comes down to Generation 1 collector's stuff like this, Magic Ruler, I think Magic Ruler, I believe, wasn't it the third set, the third core booster set in TCG? Really, really old, like ancient. I'm talking about, like, this is like maybe 2002, 2003 era Yu-Gi-Oh! we're talking about right here. Uh, fantastic artwork, and this is just an awesome set. You know, it has magic card stamps right here because back in the day it was called magic card and not spell card. I think it's really dumb they changed it to spell card. I like magic cards so much better, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, all these are going to be unlimited. Not really too concerned about the unlimited. This being so old and a collector's card now, I definitely focus on the first editions exclusively, and I'm very surprised. They are, you know, 17 and a half, 18 and a quarter, and then 21, and start to trickle up after that. So these first three right here, especially this four of for 18, 25, I think that's an amazing price. It's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong to pop off 20s for a single ultra. It's a lot of money, but granted, these are first editions and these are generation ones. They have the magic stamps, and it's just, it's, it's pretty. This is a good investment. Um, I'm kind of hesitating. I mean, th this is core TCG right here. They have 13 of them. This is incredible for 1750. So I, I love core TCG. They hardly ever mess up their orders, and they're just a really good store in general. So I would not be surprised if these start to go away. It's pretty cool. It's 13. 13 is also my favorite number. Um, but this is a solid price point. Again, it, it's kind of like at a point where it's like, man, it's a lot of money to pay for like. You know, an old card like MST, but I promise you, this is original Gen 1 collector's value, and it's got playability. It's a simple one for one. MST is never going away. There's going to be cards that come out. You know, we have, you know, what's it called? Lightning Storm and Twin Twisters and Heavy Storm Duster and all these things that people would technically say they're, they're superior, but they're really not. This is just a simple one for one, and it's an old card, and it's still hold up to date, in my personal opinion. This is still a very, very good choice. For just simple trap and magic removal. So I would really take a look at this. I would really think hard and think if you guys want to go into Gen 1 collector's value, this is this is pretty good. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm definitely considering and going and picking up some of these myself personally because this, this is going to go up. Like I promise you this is going to go up. 18 bones for first edition magic ruler print MST. Um, it's playable, it's got great collector's value, it's got amazing artwork, and it's just got amazing history behind this card. There's so many reprints of MST, too. I think it, like, I want to say, I think it's, like, the most reprint card in the game. Like, I think it has, like, 25 or, like, 35 reprints. It's pretty insane. Next card is going to be Heavy Storm Duster. We have the Ultra Rares out of Dual Devastator, which actually look pretty cool. I, I'm not going to lie, Ultra Rare, um... Trap cards look pretty cool because I think with the purple card going with the, the gold hollow falling for the name looks pretty cool sometimes in certain cards. But I want to talk about the original super rares from Code of the Duelist. Now, this is a really special set to me personally, probably a special set to you guys too, because kind of like uh, Generation Force when we had the dawning of the XYZs, when we got the XYZ mechanic here in the TCG, same for Eternity Code, which gave us the dawning of the Link Monsters. So that, on its merit alone, makes this a collector set, and it's kind of like a changing of times. It's a transition set, so I think it's really, really cool. Um, this is, of course, the original print. It's a super rare, and it's really cheap. The first editions are literally a quarter. They're a quarter, and there's five-plus pages. It doesn't look like there's a lot of walls. Obviously, with this being so cheap, you want to stack these up and buy multiple copies at once, save on shipping. But this is still a really awesome card uh I, I love this card it's got awesome artwork it's just an alternative choice for twin twisters and you know you basically trade your cost for it being a little bit slower you have to set it first um and then of course you know there's other versions the other choice the, the mega 10 reprint and the you know ultra but this i would go for this one i would not even care about the mega 10 one or the ultra reprint even though it's a high rarity get this one Get Code of the Duelist Super Rares 1st Edition. I promise you they are going to hold 
the most value, especially because of the set that it came from, the transition set that it came from. Giant Trinade, this is a banned card that has been banned forever. This card is completely busted. It's an amazing card. It's got really cool artwork. It's like the Generation 1 card to Hey Trinade, which I'm going to go into here shortly. This card is going to come back. I kind of say it in almost every single one of my videos. I'm an avid believer that all cards come back eventually. I apologize. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, I don't know what what's uh, freezing up or... All right, so moving on here, I'm going to have to come back to the card. I don't really know what, why I was freezing up on me, but Hatronade. Okay, so this is like the watered-down version. There's a couple, several different prints now. It's actually gotten a couple different prints here, but I want to talk about, of course, this card's su super cheap. Again, so you might as well just go all out and go first edition original print secret rares. So this is just a watered-down version of... Um, of, of okay, that just happened. All right. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to reshoot this video. I, I'm so sorry about that. I don't really know. I guess my disk space is running really low. I don't even know if I can still upload this, but to be continued.